Welcome back guys, in this video I'll be testing Silent Hill 2 Remake version 1.04 on my Windows PC that has a Ryzen 5700X 3D processor and an RTX 2070 Super GPU. This new update helps in improving the performance by reducing stuttering. This is the update log. Support for DLSS and FSR 3.1.1 frame generation have been added to the game. Upon enabling DLSS frame generation, NVIDIA Reflex will get activated. It will help in reducing the latency. DLSS frame generation is exclusive to RTX 40 series GPUs. So I'll be using Nucom 9's free DLSS G2 FSR3 mod to replace DLSS frame generation with FSR 3.1 frame generation. It's a weird implementation of FSR 3.1.1 in this game. We cannot use DLSS or XCSS subscaler in conjunction with FSR frame generation. This patch also includes tons of gameplay fixes. For example, I encountered this issue. Interacting with the wrong side of the people in Brookhaven Hospital teleported James to the other side. Good to see this issue getting fixed. However, this new patch has introduced a bug as well. For some people, the cube puzzle in the labyrinth section is not working properly. The developers have acknowledged this issue. Currently, they are working on a fix. It should be available soon. According to the developers, this problem occurs when you load a save data from the labyrinth level after Toluca Prison. Created before applying the 1.04 patch, there is a temporary workaround for this as well. They recommend using an earlier save before entering the labyrinth. Nucom 9's mod is compatible with RTX GPUs only. I'll be using build 0.100 universal version. Just click on the Nexus Mods link. Need to have a free Nexus Mods account in order to download any stuff from here. Just click on manual download under universal. Click on slow download. Open the mod save file. Windows Explorer, open this folder DLL version, copy these two DLL files. We need to paste them in the games install directory. Steam version of the game, select it in your library, right click. Manage, then click on browse local files. Open sh proto folder. Open binaries folder. Open win64 folder. Paste the files in this directory. There's the game's exe file. Show you the version of FSR 3.1.1. This is the file AMD Fidelity FX DX12. Right click properties detail version 1.0.1.37507. It is indeed FSR 3.1.1. Now make sure hardware accelerated GPU scheduling setting is enabled. Right click anywhere in the desktop area, then click on display settings. Click on graphics, click on change default graphics settings, enable this setting, hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. If your monitor supports VRR, enable this setting as well. Now I'll enable VSync from NVIDIA control panel. Click on manage 3D settings, click on program settings. From this drop down bar, select Silent Hill 2, scroll down to the end. From here, enable VSync, click on apply, click on setup G-Sync, my monitor supports Precinct Premium. It's a G-Sync compatible monitor. Enable these settings. Enable G-Sync, G-Sync compatible. Enable for full screen mode. Enable settings for the selected display model. Apply. I'll be disabling a few post processing effects. Completely optional. Cannot disable them from the games in game settings. So I'll be tweaking the games engine.ini file. Just open C drive. Open users folder. Open the folder whose name is the same as your PC's username. Open app data folder. If this folder is not visible on your PC, just click on view here. Show. Check this setting hidden items. Open local folder. Here look for Silent Hill 2 folder. There it is. Open saved folder. Open config folder. Open Windows folder. Open engine.ini file. At the end, add these four lines. I'll provide them in the description of the video. Create a new section called System Settings. First line disables chromatic aberration. The second line disables vignette effect. And the third line disables variable rate shading. Click on File. Click on Save. Close the file. That's it. I've already done my testing. This game is still very demanding. Consumes a lot of VRAM in DirectX 12 mode. I'll be running the game using the low preset to keep the VRAM usage in check. 
in game settings display mode full screen resolution full hd ray tracing off of course vsync off frame generation disabled for the time being you can see i have enabled dlss subscaler and i do have access to frame generation this means our mod is working dlss preset quality graphics preset low motion blur disabled i'll be testing the game in different areas the major areas i have already completed this game 10 out of 10 but when it comes to performance it still needs a lot of work first i'll test the game in the town of silent hill eastern south wales i completed the game on standard difficulty using afterburner and rtss to show you the performance metrics keep an eye on the frame pacing graph i'll head to nilis bar that location is prone to stuttering no frame generation here Okay, we are hitting the GP bottleneck here. Take out this creature. The yeah, usage is close to seven GB, and this is the game running using the low preset. This is why I did not enable ray tracing. Oh no, the RAM usage is still increasing. I tested the game on my ROG Ally in DirectX 12 mode. The visuals were completely broken, and the RAM usage was higher than 7 GB even using the low preset. Hitching. Oh no! Look at that ugly stuttering. Frame pacing graph. So a few stutters are still present, even with this latest update, version 1.04. VRAM usage is around 7.6 GB now. It may increase further after enabling frame generation. On. We were getting around 100 FPS without frame generation after enabling it. FPS increased to around 140. Yeah, I can observe the added amount of smoothness, but look at the stuttering! Oh my god! Very poor performance in this area. Almost as if a different section of the map gets loaded when we arrive at Nilis Bar. Just explore the area. Yeah, we ran users increased to around 7.7 GB. My GPU only has 8 GB of RAM available. Now I load another area. Not impressed by the FPS stability. Frame generation is not a fix for it. Frame generation off. Outside apartments, reception office, another demanding area. Very poor visibility in this area. You have to rely on your flashlight. You can see FPS is around 60. Oh my God, 56 FPS! I just go outside. This is very bad. 50 FPS now, and look at those things in the pool. I'll go all Resident Evil on them. Oh my God. Bad vomit at me. Not this time. Go to the first floor. These apartments are just like a maze. Look at the beautiful fog effect. This thing was still alive. I'll just enable frame generation now. Here, gameplay is a bit choppy without it. On. Yeah, can observe the added amount of smoothness. Frame generation is working properly. You can see some double images around the left edge of the display. Common FSR3 artifact. Just make sure James is at the center of the display. You won't be observing this bug. I'm going to the floor above. I'm 
go through here pitch dark creature is waiting for me at the end of the hallway 130 fps now i load another demanding area the next apartment section it's the blue creek apartment frame generation off clock room area will be fighting against pyramid head oh my god just look at the performance here we are getting around 48 fps not hitting the gpu bottleneck so the game's performance seems to be limited by the single core cpu performance i have no idea what's going on here this game seriously needs some optimization work why is this game running in such a choppy manner in this room very poor visibility here In the hallways we are getting around 50 to 60 fps Just enable frame generation now Should be getting 100 fps On The yeah, fps increased to around 90 Can observe the added amount of smoothness Go downstairs We'll be fighting against pyramid head Oh no Stuttering You can see the Spikes on the frame pacing graph Occasional stutters are still present in this game It's far from fixed I'm a bit lost here Go this way, yeah there's the door With this marked on it I'll quickly take him out You must be wondering why this guy is wearing a pyramid on his head. It represents James' guilt, weight of his guilt. Oh no! Failed to dodge there. He's angry now. Load the next area, frame generation disabled. Western Southwell near Jackson. There's James and Maria. This place has gone to hell. Need to find a way out. Features everywhere. I just kill everyone. Oh no, stuttering. 60 to 70 FPS. I'll just enable frame generation now. On. Yeah, FPS increased to around 110. Can observe the added amount of smoothness. <laughs> this thing. was waiting for me hiding in the corner almost shot Maria there there's the way out I'm expecting a few hitches here Keep an eye on the frame pacing graph. There you go. Look at that ugly stutter. So very disappointed by the game's performance even after the latest update in DirectX 12 mode. Occasional stutters are still present. But good to see. Nukem 9's free DLSS G2FSR 3 mod working properly. Even RTX 20 and 30 series. GP owners can enable DLSS frame a back upon FSR frame generation in conjunction with DLSS upscaler. So that's it with the video guys. I hope you find it useful. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.